Hello and welcome to the screencast on performing permutation tests using R. So this follows from the previous screencast where we just introduced how to use the sample function in R to do sampling with or without replacement. And as we discussed in class, permutation test is a sampling without replacement sort of approach. So here we're going to do it for um, a real data set. We'll be using the dll.data or dll.csv data set as, as usual. Uh, so we'll just read that in as we always have. Um, and this chunk two really the, the just reviews what I discussed in the previous screencast, so I'll just skip that for now, but you can read it uh, if you need a review. So what we're going to do is fit a simple linear model like we have before, where we're just asking how variation for sex comb teeth can be accounted for by the genotypic effect. And genotype has a factor with two levels, uh, DLL and WT for wild type. Uh, so essentially this is nothing more than a simple t-test. And of course, we can look at a summary of, of this model and look at um, the estimated parameters and the uh, treatment contrasts for this and associated p-values. Um, but what we're going to decide for this particular permutation test is what we'd like to look at is the f-statistic. So in this case, that's 50.32 is our observed f-statistic. And we want to know, well, what... We're interested in the f-statistic, but what if some of the, say, the assumptions, uh, say assumptions of normality, for instance, maybe don't hold, or, or other such assumptions? And of course, permutation tests, uh, while your data needs to be independently and identically distributed, that actual form of distribution doesn't matter as long as it's shared between the, the groups. And so what we can do is just pull out the f-statistic, and we'll see that we get all three. And so we're just going to pull out the first value, the 50.317. That's what this, we're going to store that. To look at later. Um, and we can also use just do that from an ANOVA if we if we had wanted to, but it doesn't matter. And much like what we saw with um, the Monte Carlo simulation, really this is very, very sim uh, similar to what we did when we were doing Monte Carlo simulations for, for inferential uh, approaches. Here the difference is instead of um, simulating data and then refitting models, we're going to resample the data. We're going to sample uh, with without replacement. Um, in this case, what we're going to do is call the sample function. We're going to be sampling at the level of the response variable, which we've called y in this function. And if you see the arguments of the function call, that's just in this case going to be the sex comb teeth data set. And x is just going to be our predictor. Of course, this could be written in a more general way, but, but this serves its purpose. Um, so we do that, and we're actually running that within the actual linear model call. So model.resample actually will generate the... Uh, will store the uh, results from this linear model of shuffled response variables. So your, your sex comb teeth are shuffled with respect to genotype. So essentially, this should be null. There should be no association between genotype and sex comb teeth for, for the permutation. We do that. We pull out the F statistic as we did before and, and just return that. And so we can actually call that function a few times and see what we get. And we see we get a variety of numbers. Um, that's, of course, not an optimal way of doing it. So instead, why don't we use the replicate function to do it, say, n times. And here we'll just make n 500. So we run that. And we can get, it just takes a second to, to run it. And we get a distribution, as we can see here, for these uh, f values, for these the f statistic under essentially the null model of no association between the sex comb teeth response variable and the genotype predictor variable in this particular case. Uh, so this provides us something to compare our observed against. We can do the same thing, of course, with a for loop. Um, not much different. We first just initialize a variable, which we're going to store, uh, use to store um, the uh, f statistics we calculate under permutation. And then we can just write a short for loop where we're saying for i and 1 to n, which n capital N is just 500 here. Just run the function that many times and store each, for each iteration, just store the permuted f statistic. Again, it just takes a second. The only reason you might want to use one versus the other, uh, the for loop may be faster for a very, very large data sets. Otherwise, they're pretty similar. The, 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 for a 500, the replicate might be slightly faster. But for large uh, data sets or large numbers of iterations, it, it could matter. Um, we can look at the histogram of this, and it's going to look pretty similar. It won't be identical, of course, because these are 500 new uh, samples from, from this uh, distribution 
where the distribution is essentially no association between sex comb teeth and genotype. So it looks pretty similar. Okay. And if we remind ourselves that the F statistic is simply just the ratio of two variances, in generally we're talking about the between group variance or the treatment variance versus the residual variance, and we just scale, scale those by degrees of freedom, if there's no effect, those two should have, on average, uh, should have an expected value close to about one. Um, and uh, when that denominator uh, is, uh, sorry, the numerator is very large uh, relative to the denominator, then that suggests that there's a lot more variation between the groups, in, the, in other words, between our genotypes. Um, so we can maybe make a slightly prettier plot, um, and I'll just grab all of this at once, to plot the observed uh, distribution of the F statistics from the sampling uh, without replacement, so the permutation test, the empirically derived via randomization. Um, and on the bottom, it's, it's just the same thing. Uh, oh, it's the uh, simulations directly from an F distribution. And the black line that might be a little bit difficult to see is simply just the theoretical F distribution. What you can clearly see from this, though, is that our observed F value at about 50 is far larger than anything we've got among these 500 uh, resampling events. Okay, so of course we can use this to get directly a p value like we've done before. We're basically just asking how many of the permuted f statistics, how many of the f statistics we got under the permutation are greater than or equal to the one we uh, observed with the real data, and we just divide by n where that's the number of iterations. And of course in this case that's just going to give us zero because we did 500. So our real value, p value, of course, is not zero. Keep in mind it's just going to be one over. Uh, n is the smallest p-value we can make a statement about. So it'll just be 1 over n, which will just be 0 0.02. So we know it's less than or equal to 0 0.002. Uh, okay. I'd also like to just clarify and make, make it useful to think about what the distributions of the p-values are going to be. So we're not looking about the f-statistic or an effect size or whatever. Here we're thinking about the distribution of p-values under permutation. And it's important to understand this. So we're going to write, rerun that same uh, function we did before. Here, the only thing that, that's different is we're pulling out the p-value directly. Instead of grabbing the f-statistic, we've just grabbed the p-value from the ANOVA. And you could have done this from the treatment contrast as well and the coefficient. It will be equivalent in this particular case. And so we run that. Just give it a second. There we go. And what you see is a distribution that's, we've only done 500, so it's not going to be exactly, but it's approximately uniform. That is, we have approximately the same probability of getting something between 0 and 0 0.1 as we do of 0 0.9 to, to 1. The approximately the same number of simulations will have a p-value in that re region. Why is this? Well, it's important to think about what we're asking, right? If there is no effect, if there's no association between sex comb teeth and genotype, then our p-values are essentially random. So we should essentially get a uniform distribution of those p-values under this model. In fact, this is commonly used as part, uh, whether they do it by permutation or, or using some theoretical uh, approaches, this is commonly used for false discovery rates to get an idea of what our empirical distribution or our distribution of p-values should be under a null model. And we can say, well, how do we have p-values that are in excess of that in some sense? A um, couple of other quick notes to make. Let me just clean up the screen here. Um, as we've talked about before in the sample lecture, it's important to remember that uh, sampling or doing the resampling at the level of the data vector itself is convenient when there's only a single, say, res uh, response variable or a single dependent variable. Um, uh, however, when you have multiple explanatory variables, so multiple predictors, um, but only a single response variable, you can still use sample, but just on the, the response, because you just want to shuffle that one. If you shuffle the explanatory variables, that matrix, the structure of it, the intra-observation correlation, will break apart, which won't help you very much. Um, and if you have truly multivariate tests, so in particular, say you have a multivariate a matrix of responses as well as a matrix of predictors, you can't use uh, sample directly on the data. Instead, you follow the directions from using sample uh, from the first screencast where you're going to sample along the index. And again, this is just the basic idea. If A is our matrix, we're going to sample the rows of A so that we actually get row by row um, 
uh, permutations as opposed to permuting the entire data structure. Um, I should also mention there's a variety of packages, there's probably far more than this, that uh, can implement a variety of permutation tests. I have not tried many of these, but definitely if you're going to be using this for more complex models, it's worth looking into them. All right, well, thank you.